you actually have to go back over 2,000 years to about 430 BCE to the Greek tragedy Oedipus Rex, that classic play by Sophocles, which traces the story of a king who learns of his future fate and attempts to defy it, an act of hubris that ultimately seals his fate. You know, the Greeks were interested in oracles who might predict the future, a tradition that actually carries on today when we think of horoscopes or tarot card readings. And I think one reason Oedipus as a story endures is because people remain interested in their own future and whether it can be predicted or shaped. Oedipus, who would eventually cry over his own tragedy, begins with a story where he consults a soothsayer and gets a terrible horoscope he tries to avoid, learning that he was fated to kill his father and marry his mother, Oedipus resolved never to return to Corinth, according to one Britannica account. Now, that prediction would be an unspeakable family tragedy, to say the least. Oedipus, in the story, vows never to return in order to avoid being even near his family, where he might somehow meet that fate. But through various twists, it is running from his fate that seals it. Now, the first piece, very simple. People who run for president try to formally announce their campaigns on the later side, typically about six months before the primary season begins, if you look at, say, some of the Republicans running right now. Now, most years, that's, say, around May or June before the election year. And we know the reason. There's a bunch of laws and campaign finance limits that only kick in once you formally declare. Take Republican Mitt Romney. He announced about six months out of the 2020-12 race. We checked. It was June 2nd, the year before the presidential election year. Now, Trump had talked up running for a long time leading up to 2016, but he followed the same pattern. He only formally announced his presidential campaign, that, that cycle, about six months out of the 2016 race. You may remember it was initially treated with quite a lot of questions when he went down the escalator and said he was running for president, and he followed that calendar pattern of other presidential cycles and other candidates in both parties, about six months out. This time was very different. Donald Trump jumped in far earlier and broke his own precedent, as I mentioned. And he, of course, rejected the widespread strategy that candidates use to avoid having those legal restrictions kick in. And we've seen Donald Trump certainly listen to, well, advisors with strategic counsel for how to avoid the rules or restrictions, which is one of the reasons we think he did it the normal six-month way in 16. Well, Trump didn't just jump in for the few more months this time. He announced 15 months out in November 2022, which made for this unusual precedent. It was the earliest presidential candidacy declaration in modern history, as Slate reported. And it was done at this home front gathering, sometimes panned as looking a little lackluster or even rushed. In order to make America great and glorious again, I am tonight announcing my candidacy for President of the United States. Now, there it was very, very early. Weird, unusual, early thing over here. And that's what brings us to the tragic flaw of Oedipus over here, because I can actually show you, it's pretty interesting, as I said, given what's happening, that there was reporting, clues, leaks, and analysts all discussing Donald Trump's exact unusual motivation. I am curious about this very early announcement, and I'm wondering if you think that maybe Donald Trump is trying to beat the AG or any of the other legal officials, the DOJ, you name them. Many people around the president who I spoke to were talking about his concerns um, about facing prosecution. And you write in part, quote, a big reason Trump announced his run is he fears criminal prosecution. He's a desperate man, a threatened and rabid animal. He's running to stay out of prison. In private conversations, pretty blunt that they see it as 
he has to win the election, and that is how he guarantees that he does not face jail time. It's pretty amazing that when Trump ran in 2016, his slogan was lock her up, and in 2024, it's going to be vote for me or I'm going to go to jail. This was widely discussed at the time, and some of those were objective, nonpartisan reporters discussing aides admitting it. Trump calculated that by rushing to become a candidate again, it would make it harder to indict him, that the move would put more heat on the DOJ, which had concerns it didn't want to look partisan if it were to indict a now declared major challenger to the incumbent, President Biden. Now, it may be a Trump ploy, but it was rooted in very clear signs that Garland's DOJ and the FBI were resistant to opening probes into Trump's role, for example, on January 6th. And again, as we get into this tonight, I want to remind you, it's easy to sometimes forget how it was really common knowledge up to that point that the Garland DOJ was not really going up the line to indict Trump officials or Trump himself for January 6th. Garland, just three days after what I showed you earlier, Donald Trump declaring that early bid for president. I'm here today to announce the appointment of a special counsel in connection with two ongoing criminal investigations based on recent developments including the former president's announcement that he is a candidate for president in the next election, I have concluded that it is in the public interest to appoint a special counsel. There you have it. And Garland had not been leading a DOJ that had, at that point, indicted any Trump official over January 6th, let alone the former president himself. That was the status quo that I mentioned, like that exhaustive Washington Post report on the lack of indictments, revealing that DOJ had a wariness about appearing partisan internal clashes over how much evidence was sufficient to investigate the actions of Trump that drove and contributed to the slow pace. Once Smith took over, it went from slow to warp speed with indictments in the espionage case within eight months. Our laws that protect national defense information are critical to the safety and security of the United States, and they must be enforced. We have one set of laws in this country and they apply to everyone. And then Jack Smith was back at it last week with the coup charges of defendant Trump. The attack on our nation's capital on January 6th, 2021, was an unprecedented assault on the seat of American democracy. As described in the indictment, it was fueled by lies. The facts show without special counsel Smith, DOJ was not on track to indict Trump. Without Trump's early campaign announcement, there's no special counsel Smith. It is the ultimate Greek tragedy. Donald Trump trying to outrun his fate and sealing it, playing himself. Now, that alone's interesting, right? You might say, okay, Ari, cool story or a tragic play, but if Trump was just delaying his campaign announcement, if that's the only quibble, then eventually, if Trump declared, wouldn't Garland use that same rule to appoint a special counsel and then the probe would heat back up, right? If this were like dinner party talk, that might be the rebuttal. Well, I have an answer to that for you too right now. No. Actually, according to our legal analysis, we can show you this new tonight. It's actually clear. You have there, Trump did his announcement early, back in November 2022. As I showed you, Jack Smith appointed just days after that. Then within seven months, Smith indicts the Espionage Act violations in the Docs case, coup charges last week. And this is, as you can see, long before what's on the far right, the 2024 primaries. So Trump's early move actually gave Smith, who's clearly a fast worker, this early start of sorts, the seven months you see, to do this work before getting anywhere near those primaries. That's what happened. And now we have a legal projection for you of the exact same timeline, those underlying facts, with the hypothetical. What if Donald Trump simply followed the typical calendar and his own past schedule instead of trying to game the system? Take a look. This is the hypothetical, your typical campaign calendar. I went through the examples. It's true in both parties. Typical announcement window is where we started instead in the middle there. But if you do seven months there, where do you wind up? If Smith took the same amount of time, which was fast, to jumpstart his work, well, then his seven months for the first charge would land in December, literally weeks 
from the GOP primaries, and the timing for the coup charge would be after that in 2024, smack in the middle of that primary voting. The primary season well underway there in February. So what you see here, we made, this is new tonight, the factual window, the seven months, and the traditional starting announcement time. That typical announcement window in the middle, like I said, what Romney did, what Trump did in his last go around in 2015, if Donald Trump hadn't been trying so hard to rig and outmaneuver and game the system, if he'd used the normal time, as you see on the X's, it is, well, right smack with the primaries. And the final question would be, well, if Smith uncovered these now indicted crimes, even if he started later, maybe he'd press on and charge them in the primaries because they are that important. No. DOJ precedent holds otherwise. Any special counsel is subject to the rules and the attorney general's supervision. The DOJ has this guidance you've probably heard about. Prosecutors are supposed to avoid actions of this magnitude within 60 days of voting and never select the timing of an action, including criminal charges, for the purpose of affecting any election. That's a policy, I can tell you, that this Attorney General Merrick Garland actually just reaffirmed in a memo last year. And the department tries to avoid those actions near elections and primaries. It's not a law, but it is the rules. We have every reason to think Merrick Garland would enforce the rules as he recently affirmed them, and that Smith wouldn't be trying to break with the rules in an unprecedented first-ever indictment of a former president who's also running for office. So this hypothetical calendar would actually close that door. It would tie the hands of the special counsel. If Donald Trump or one of his aides happens to be watching tonight, and we, we do hear from them from time to time, what you are looking at is the very likely scenario where the current defendant, Donald Trump, wouldn't have been indicted on either of these cases by the special counsel based on the actual timeline, the actual rules. The only thing different was that Donald Trump had to start earlier, had to rig the system, had to try to outsmart people, which is why tonight, in this particular discussion, we begin and end with that Greek tragedy of Oedipus.